It's been a little bit of a while since we've done a reviews episode. Um, we took a little bit of a break, but our our folder full of songs to review has now filled itself back up again. So we're going to start today with Fight for Friday with their song Expensive Taste. I'm facing away. She has no time for me. She was never gonna stay. I should have seen the day. A few episodes ago we did a bit of a disclaimer when reviewing a pop punk song saying that we used to play pop punk a hell of a lot, we used to be in a band that was pop punk and we now kind of dislike the genre because not only have we been exposed to it a hell of a lot over a number of years, it is also a genre that we see as somewhat bland and isn't doing a great deal new which means that our opinion of this genre is tainted a little bit. With that I think that this song fits a lot of the cliches of the genre. If I was someone who liked that genre, I'd probably like the song because it, it does the kind of things that everyone else is doing and if that is something I like, I'd probably like this song. Not, not to say that it, I'm saying it's a bad song or that it's badly produced or anything like that, it's good. Sadly, my opinion of it is I don't like the genre itself so there's not gonna be a great deal that can sway me round unless you did something uh, drastically different away from the genre, you haven't done that. So, um, good songwriting. That side of stuff, the production's pretty good. One thing I will say about the production is that you've double checked the vocals, so obviously you've done two takes and put them together. That's a very common thing for the, for the genre as well. But the double track later on in, in, the, in the song is, is good. It, it's consistent and both times when you've done the singing are pretty much identical. That's a double track. Earlier on in the song, um, the two takes seem to be slightly differing and you kind of notice the inconsistencies between both of the tracks. Uh, the uh, the best way to solve that problem is to make sure you're doing multiple takes and are doing consistent takes. Okay, um, I would like to echo with what Lenny said about the whole tainted opinion of pop punk because I think that it is most pop punk to me comes off as very stale and generic. That being said, it was a well written pop punk song. The riff was really catchy. I still have it stuck in my head now. Vocal lines were well written, the chord sequences were, albeit a little bit bland, well put together, they pervade emotion well. However, the one thing that I will say is at the end of the chorus, where you have your hook, which is the to serve her expensive taste bit, it seemed like you've tried to cram too many syllables into that, and it feels rushed, it isn't as catchy as it could be, and it kind of loses a little bit of the... A little bit of the feeling that you've been bringing throughout the whole song, it kind of goes like, Ooh, and then it just kind of drops off at the chorus, it's like, oh, that's a bit anticlimactic. And then it goes back to the riff straight after again, which is kind of like the catchy part of the song, so I suppose it evens itself out anyway. Yeah, it's a well-written song, however, I would recommend that if you're still doing that genre in this day and age, please try something different. The next song that we're going to review today is called Admission by the Cliftons. I really like that song actually, I think the verse vocal line was really catchy, it was really nice, it felt like it was constantly building towards something, I felt like the verses were probably the strongest part of the song in my opinion, I thought you kind of lost momentum a little bit at the chorus, I felt like the vocals were a little bit rushed. I think the vocals in the chorus could do with a little bit more passion, it feels like you're just kind of murmuring them along to the song and it doesn't feel like you're... You really feel what it is that they're saying. Uh, that being said, it was all well written. Uh, some parts of it did feel a little bit disjointed and I think that might be because the drums weren't as tight as they could be. It was crafted well, the song had a good structure, it had a good sound. Overall, yeah, pretty good song. My entire notes that I wrote for the song were just on the chorus. Um, I think everything else in the song is pretty good. 
to use a phrase that Joe actually uses, to echo what Joe said, the verses, yeah, are really good. Again, Joe said, a bit more passion. Yeah, maybe project more in the chorus. I think Catfish in the Bottom and do this quite a lot with their choruses, that the, the singer really kind of belts uh, the chorus and it feels big and powerful and I, Catfish isn't even a band that I, I particularly like but that sound that they get with the vocals and that kind of thing I think is something that if you kind of took on board and maybe implemented something similar that'd sound pretty cool um, with that maybe get one of your other members doing a harmony of that vocal that'd be pretty cool because it, it's not like it's the most complex vocal line in the world so maybe put in a harmony over it that maybe when the lead bit repeats the same notes, maybe the harmony could do different each time, or just something like that, just something a little bit more interesting, because the basis of what you've got going on with that melody is cool. Belt it, maybe put a harmony on it, and it'll be fucking mint. The lead guitarist is playing the vocal melody along with the vocal. Maybe add a few more notes to that um, guitar melody, just so that it kind of differentiates itself from the vocals. Uh, just a little extra notes in between the notes or like passing notes or repeats of notes anything like that would be Im Improvements, but to be fair what you've got going on already is pretty damn good on the whole that was a very very good song So on to the last song uh, in the email that we got uh, From the manager of this band uh, This band is three kids from Texas a 13 year old a 15 year old and Tyrone they didn't give us the name they just told uh, they didn't give us the age, they just told us Tyrone. So we have a 13 year old, 15 year old, and Tyrone. This is called For Real and Get Down to It. I had very mixed feelings about this song and it's ex it, it's something that I can't express all that well because I don't think I've felt it before because to put it as bluntly and honestly as possible I don't think this track is uh, a, like a, a broadcast quality track it's not it's not perfectly polished it's not mixed fantastically it's not written phenomenally but the amount of potential that I see in this track is like a very great amount with a few little tweaks to almost, to every little element and I think this track would be a mint track I don't really like it probably wouldn't listen to it but with a few little tweaks that would be amazing kind of gives me the vibes of like what I guess kind of Fatboy Slim was doing what, 20 years ago mm. 15 years ago that kind of thing um, it sounds sexy which is odd because it's like young teenagers that have made it and I don't know if that was the intention when you made the song, but that's kind of how the song comes across to me, and I think that's cool. Uh, the vocal bits, I think, are the weakest point. I think uh, whoever is doing the vocals on it, it isn't that confident, uh, which there isn't a great uh, solution for other than to keep practicing your vocals, keep get confidence in your vocals, and be uh, experiment with stuff and just keep working at your vocals to the point where you're you're confident with them so then your performance of them is a little bit more out there if i was just talking in terms of for the track as opposed to working what you with what you've got i think some kind of like really sexy man voice doing some kind of like rap would be fucking cool for this like, like barry white like ba if barry white rapped something like that would just be fucking cool for this track um whether that's something you can actually do or not uh, is, I guess, irrelevant. If you, if you want to try something like that, it's cool. Notice that you, you've got a choir in it in the last 10 seconds or so of the song. A choir kind of comes in. Maybe experiment with that. Even if you can just kind of sample the bit that you recorded with the choir and edit in other sections and stuff. That are just little things that could just improve the track would... Uh, make it seem really really cool. I really like the synth that you've got that's kind of like the it's almost like a bass kind of sound that's kind of squishy and is nice. I uh, keep that but I would also in the bigger sections maybe put in a real bass doing like a real cool bass line that I'd be meant do some cool stuff with it and then you'll end up with like a really cool track. I don't really have much to add to that. I actually really enjoyed listening to that song. I really like the kind of main bass synth riff that you've got going on. I thought that kind of 
just worked really well. I just really liked it. The drums as well kind of had a bit of a hip hop vibe to it, which worked really well. Also, the bongos were a nice addition, which again, worked really well. There's not really much I can say apart from if it was me, I would... The vocals in the song at the minute may as well not be there, in my opinion. Like, they don't really add much. You can barely hear what the guy's saying. It's not, doesn't sound very confident, like Lenny said. It's just not there yet. So I think that song would be better served as either an instrumental or you can bring Barry White or Marvin Gaye back from the dead and they come and sing on your track. But yeah, it's a really, really good start to a song. Yeah. Is it? I guess to add a little bit to um, kind of maybe where you could think about taking it forward because a lot of bands kind of send the stuff and it, it's solidified within a genre and we kind of have to go, it's a bit generic for that genre, maybe try something else and we can't really give examples of something else because what they have is a crafted finished thing that wouldn't really work with anything else and you kind of have to start with new songs for that kind of thing but this is a track where it's kind of, it feels kind of half done so it feels like you could add stuff to it and it wouldn't matter and I would say maybe trying to embrace a bit of hip hop influence into the track like with the uh, sexy bass line like with a potential like soothing kind of maybe a rap kind of thing bringing your track slightly further towards hip hop I think would benefit greatly not only for a for bigger appeal because you kind of brand as funk and the the soundcloud uh, hashtag was uh, disco maybe embracing hip hop would be kind of a cool little addition to the sound that you've already got, in my opinion. Uh, Never had anything like that before. No, thank you yeah. for presenting us that, because um, as much as uh, to, to give you a bit of a criticism, the artwork and stuff that you're using, I'm not particularly a fan of um, the, the, the green kind of colour that you use as a background, it's not very sexy. Um, so I... When I first saw that, I didn't have very high hopes for the track, and I was pleasantly surprised. So, thank you for that. If you want to submit a song for this series, where we just kind of mumble for 15 minutes, and then I edit together to try and seem cohesive, um, if you would like that to happen to your track, email this email, um, and try and put the reviews or something like that in the subject line of the email because that makes it a lot easier for me to put it into the correct folder. On the screen now there is a link to this series where you can check out all of the other reviews, episodes and all the new ones when they come out. There is also a best of playlist where it's all of our best of videos. Don't really need to explain that. Go and click on that if you just want to learn how to be a cooler band and learn the industry and all that kind of shit. Enjoy your day and I'll see you on Saturday.